A 4-1 victory over Lokomotiv Moscow at the weekend clinched the inaugural Russian Championship for Spartak two weeks before their league season ends. With ten players currently in the Russian national team, there's no doubting Spartak's quality. But Sunday proved a red-letter day for Ian Rush. Rosenthal now, number 11, takes on Bruce and beats him. There's a pullback on here, and it's Rush for a goal! And that's the record! Rushy, Liverpool's new all-time record scorer with 287 goals, 20 of them in Europe. Well, another one or more would be very welcome this afternoon to boost a Liverpool side who, already without the band Paul Stewart, have today lost their captain, Steve Nicholl, with a groin strain. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is the return to action of three England internationals, Mark Wright, Rob Jones and Michael Thomas. Well, Alan and Jimmy are here. How serious the loss of Steve Nicholl? Well, it's a massive blow for them. It's no coincidence since he came back from injury that they've gone four undefeated. Not great by Liverpool standards, but it's a start. And just as they seem to be turning the corner, somebody goes down. I'm a bit worried about this game tonight. I think that there's massive responsibility in the shoulders of Hutchison and Redknapp in midfield because of the system they're going to play, five-man midfield. Do you feel the same, Jim? He's getting me frightened already, isn't he? What, <laughs> Liverpool? I uh, think they're coming back to form, you see, Liverpool. They are, and they need to, really. I'm, I'm very impressed with the strength of the opposition at their peak. Uh, let off the last two weeks' pressure of the season, really, by winning the championship early. So they really should be flying, which just shows, really, the, uh, the nature of the opposition that Liverpool are facing. So hard test for those young ones. As, as well as the elderly gentleman of which this young man used to be a part. That's right. You're, you're, really, you're really worried, Alan, aren't you, about the defensive side, aren't you? The defensive nature. Well, of no, the five-man midfield, what they must do is they, they can't afford to leave Rush isolated, but at the same time, they've got to be disciplined so the game isn't open. And what they need to have is somebody to cover the back four. They've got to have somebody in the whole position in front of the back four. Now, Michael Thomas won't do that because he's an attacking player. Redknapp and Hutchison, for me, are attacking players as well, and I'm just worried what one of them is going to sit in front of the back four and give them a bit of cover. Mm. Where do you think, how do you think Graham Souness will be approaching the game? In that defensive manner, Jim, or...? A little less frightened than me, I hope. Uh, you know, managers always approach it optimistically. And, as you say, last weekend there was encouragement. Uh, and if they can uh, lose by one goal, it'll be a win, if you know what I mean. <laughs> if they're near and still in it, coming back to Anfield, where it'd be a much more relaxing situation, then, then they, they must have a chance, but yeah. I wouldn't like to see them go a goal or two, more than a goal or two. Well, they? it promises to be a, a great game. There's the Lennon Stadium, and there are the two teams for this afternoon's match. Spartak Moscow against Liverpool, and our commentary team, Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. And it's Liverpool wearing green and making their way out into reasonably heavy sleet. It's been raining most of the day, and as the temperature has dropped, Around the zero point, the rain has turned to sleep. The officials this evening all come from Sweden. The referee is Haruna Larsen. And this is the same stadium where 24 hours ago, CSKA, the army side from Moscow, drew 1-1 with the European Cup holders, Barcelona. Very, very little cover. Those on the far side, as we look, are going to get exceedingly wet. Trevor Brooking has been enjoying the uh, conditions here in Moscow for the last uh, two and a half days. I think the best decision was the fact that we decided not to sit outside here yesterday. It was uh, in two minds whether the sample will be out if they're outside and then somebody suggested the weather might not be too good. So that was uh, our best decision. But it's. Uh, it's amazing how quickly the stadium's filled up to a certain extent. It was, what, a half an hour before kick-off with the weather, we thought it was going to be fairly fast, but a, a lot of noise and atmosphere now. So Mark Wright there back as captain of the Liverpool side. I'm not sure that would have been the case if Steve Nicholl had been fit. In fact, I'm sure it wouldn't have been. As Alan Hansen said, the return of Steve Nicholl has coincided with the revival in the fortunes of Liverpool. Once again, they have to do without him. And it's perhaps worth recalling that it was in this round a year ago that Steve Nicholl pulled a hamstring against Ozer and was not seen again in that contest. It was a hamstring that travelled him for so long and he didn't make the Scottish squad for the European Championship. 
Spartak Moscow, incidentally, have just won the first ever Russian championship. They beat Lokomotiv Leipzig, uh, Lokomotiv of Moscow here at the weekend and so become the first Russian champions. They were the Soviet title winners in 1989. Their side shows just one change from the weekend. The 18-year-old Beschetnik has replaced another attacker, Mikhail Rusayev. So the team in red now are Spartak Moscow and we are having a one-minute silence here in memory of those who died 10 years ago in a tragedy at the stadium when Spartak played Harlem of Holland 10 years ago on October the 20th. And for the record, we have just been officially given the two teams. Spartak attacking the goal to our right. Bitnitsky starting the first attack, which is going backwards. Here's Anopka at the back there. Made his debut in the stadium against England back in April. Burrows has taken... Uh, a central defensive position to the left of Mark Wright, with Rob Jones playing at left back. A little thing which uh, might interest on the hands of back there was asking which of the midfield trio might do the anchor role. It's Jamie Redknapp, actually. He's on Huntington. He's going to play sort of the left side-ish a bit of, of centre. Michael Thomas to the right of centre. And Jamie Redknapp is going to sit just in front of the back four. But as Alan said, he's, he's, the tackling part isn't his strongest part of his game. And so a uh, big responsibility on him. If, as Bartek, all Russian teams seem to sort of soak up the pressure and like to counter-attack break from midfield, and that's when he's going to have to be there to, to cycle that. Little back heel by Mark Waters. Waters again, wearing the number eight. Bartek Club, the club of the people in the city of Moscow. CSKA is the army club. Dinamo Moscow, formerly the club, supposedly backed by the KGB. The presentation between the referee and the, lounge and the linesman is uh, quite a lot of announcements being made around the stadium. Redknapp, not the youngest player on the field the only teenager in the Liverpool side and this is Lediakov crosses early and they've got themselves out manoeuvred and the opportunity is not taken really far too casual Vladimir Vesketnik just thought that all he had to do was decide to put the ball in and he just didn't concentrate on the task at hand bobbled a little bit just as he went to play it to be fair to him still a great chance and that was the what we've just spoken about before, uh, the, the sort of Spartak side soaking up the pressure, breaking midfield, midfield. They had that extra man, superb early ball by Legikov, and uh, the striker should have scored. He's only 18, though, young son. Anopka, nice little flick this time. And the bounce was uh, a little helpful to Bruce Grobola. Shot from Legikov. the people are having to put up with well, the conditions in the city of Moscow these days they put up with quite a lot back in July a dollar would have got you 125 rubles is now in October up to 342 that's how the standard of living has gone down and as things become more expensive for the locals so things like the monthly pension which is about $3.50 on the current exchange rate doesn't go up. Rush unable to take it. It's four men supporting them, which was interesting. Good break by Jones. This is Walters. Who's is out to Klistov. 21-year-old of whom much is expected. Klistov. Just off the goalkeepers, the only full survivor from the 1989 championship side. Although Ivanov did play a handful of games. Mark Wright, touch to Jones, Michael Thomas. 
That's an important role this evening, Michael Thomas. One of more experience than his colleagues in the middle of the field. Telegraphed across field pass. Walters. He whistles from the crowd. He's got himself a shooting opportunity, but he didn't really get hold of the ball. No test for Stanislav Chichesov. Went to the European Championship with the CIS team, expecting to be number one choice. But he lost out to the goalkeeper from CSKA, staying here last night happy. Andrei Vietnitsky with Lediakov. Another from the European Championship squad, although he didn't play. Right, trying to make him go one way and then the other, and the shot was, in fact, absolutely straight. As we look at Graham Sunis from the centre on the Liverpool bench, at least they're under cover. Anopka. sort of anchor man in front of the spare man who is under a Tioni shot Vietnitsky Kapin Leshtov Kapin offside against the youngster Sobjatnik Early signs of how well uh, Spartak do pass it through the midfield. A lot of good movement and uh, at the moment Liverpool having to get numbers back just to make sure they don't get a, a shot on target. But uh, at the moment uh, they do look at things for starting to see how they won their title with a couple of weeks to spare. Plenty of time for Grobola. She's taking rather more than perhaps he should have. And he escapes. It's a goal kick, but on such a surface that really was dicing with death. Well, it's an amazing incident, isn't it? I mean, I mean dribbling out of the, the penalty box and then uh, getting half tackled and, and the ball could easily have floated into the net and uh, just went past the post. Uh, I'm not sure the Moscow crowd would have uh, seen Bruce Grobler in action. They had an early glimpse. Unless he wasn't watching the Italian goalkeeper a week ago. Challenged by Valeri Kapin. Liverpool throw. Walters prepared to take it. get to the uh, goal line the possession again Hutchison offering himself played longer Rush no chance of getting onto that crowd disappointed here 24 hours ago and the home side then PSKA took the lead the European Cup holders came back to get a draw and looked good value for it Spartak have a habit of doing very well away from home. In the uh, last round, even against Avenir of Luxembourg, they were held nil-nil at home. One away, 5-1. This is McManaman. The shooting comes quite early and didn't take it. Referee in the way for Jamie Redknapp, about which he wasn't too pleased. And the free kick follows for Spartak. Anopka. Sort of haircut which doesn't benefit from conditions like this. I'm drawing no comparisons at all, there. Huh? 
Zedia Goff. Slightly awkwardly. Not effective by Burrows. And uh, Grobble are invited to try again. On the left comfortably. That's better. Authors on the touchline. For whom the pass was intended from Steve McManaman. Coming out from the back is Andrei Tjernishov. Yednitsky. Vladchenko. We'll keep it for long. Rush. They've got to get back quickly. Break is by Peter Dev. Who scores? They got really caught out then, Liverpool. All pushing forward under the halfway line. And really simple, straightforward pass. Shake of the head on the bench, but Oleg Romansev must be pleased with that gift. And history repeating itself because the home side scored from a gift 24 hours ago. Umbrella's being waved in the air. The red and white, in case you've joined us late. They're the colours of the home side. Spartak of Moscow. And really, as far as they're concerned, a very simple goal. And from Liverpool's point of view, one given away. It was a soft goal. I mean, uh, caught very flat. In Russia, I think it was, who lost possession initially. But uh, the ball played through. Liverpool looking for the offside. But Kisarev was... Uh, level at worst so he was okay went through and just knocked it between Bruce Grobelar's legs as he tried to stand up and uh, make a, a sort of huge obstacle but it went in and it was an example of their passing movement through midfield and uh, just what Liverpool didn't want Embarrassing for Bruce Grobelar but uh, Certainly can't blame him, he was totally exposed. Good width, Spartak, as well. Ledyakov. takes the resulting corner not so unable to get to it Liverpool not for the first time in the reign of Graham Sunis under pressure Anopka Chernyshoff takes it into the opposition half and he's just standing now on the halfway line all his colleagues other than the goalkeeper are in the Liverpool area of the field. All not being cleared madly well, and here's Pianitsky and the recovery from Jones. Well, the problem there again, a flat back four that aren't used to playing together. He stayed in, and the others went out and played the other, the uh, Spartak forwards on side. Another corner, which Lediakov takes. Rush back to help. And endeavour to you as well. Walters on his own forward. It's a poor touch. Able to Liverpool to push to the halfway line. Liverpool to push to the halfway line. In the main two forward, Rachenka and Bestiasnik. Have players wide and they have Pianitsky to control things from the middle, just behind those front players. Karpin is wide on the right, number eight.
Zednitsky again starting things. Zediakov. There's too much involved in everything that Sparta can put together so far. Anopka back to Lediakov, and Anopka makes a forward run. Jimmy Redknapp went with Lediakov. And they've got a player offside here. That's not going to count. Great roar from the crowd, but the flag was up long since against Dmitry Radchenko. Definitely offside, but it's... It does give an example of the problem you play if you, you've got a flat back four and you are pushing up for offside and um, foreign opposition tend to sort of just play one up and then run from deep in midfield and, and it is a risky game to play. 15 minutes gone. It was risky once too often for Liverpool who are a goal down. For Nikolai Pisarev. They now have the free kick, which Jones is going to take. Stops a little bit short and plays out with some assuredness. As Chesnik has gone forward of the man in possession, Kleshtov, who makes a bad pass. Equally true of Mike Marsh. Also also giving the ball away too often for comfort. Hurried there by Mark Wright. They really need to look to him for his experience. But of course he hasn't been in the side recently. And is very much in the doldrum. Missed the last four matches. Question of form, not of injury. That's his England face as well. Jamie Redknapp. Might be off rush, but the time to play and return. Hutchison. Scored in the last four, getting in. Oleg Romantsev, certain uh, consistency about him. Every time we've looked at him so far, he's uh, taken his head. He's already produced the best European run that uh, Moscow Sparta have ever had. In 91, when they got to the semi-finals of the European Cup. Season 1991. They got to the semi-finals of the European Cup to uh, lose to Chris Waddles, Marseille. Goalkeeper's committed, and with some comfort, Thomas doing the hurdling. Freeman went for the same ball, with the result that Walters was not wide when he should have been. Redknapp, a bit tight. A bit exposed then if they had lost possession too. Hutchison. Comes to be cut out by Kleshtov. Vietnitsky. Anopka. Vietnitsky. Not played through him, it's played through Lediakov. Both of them are finding a little more room than local supporters will find comfortable. pushed up and stifled that attack and they've got to start again. Kleshtov. Offside flag anyway. The referee's given that or throw, I'm not sure. He's given the offside. Burrows will take it. Only one to play in every match this season for Liverpool. Anopka didn't know where that was. He turned his back on it. That's Hutchison. Steve McManaman tries to go to collect and succeed. So got four in the box, Liverpool. Marsh in possession. And Anopka, as they say, gets rid. Thomas. Redknapp. 
times that Liverpool cleared their heads a bit from giving away the goal. Good kick for that challenge on Walters. Rob Jones. As soon as really didn't want to hurry him back, but forced to because of the injury to Nickel. Jamie Redknapp. Thought for a moment about a shot. Again, they've got plenty forward. Good cover. But denied Michael Thomas. Ivanov who robbed him. Liverpool concedes the free kick. But even so, a better spell from them. It is a better spell. I mean, Jamie Redknapp just got a yellow card there for a tackle that uh, Frank Homewood would, would never have been punished in that way. I mean, it was uh, just a, a fairly average challenge, right? It was a free kick, but uh, it's just an example of how easily it is to pick up a card such as that. <laughs> Jamie Redknapp, I think, as mystified as anyone, but that's something he's going to have to learn that almost any challenge, uh, which is a foul, could uh, end up as a yellow card. Ivanov, Machenka, stretch yourself, pulling forward from the back, now has to get back to his defensive position, not with a pass like that. One touched up and very, very well left, the foot carping away, Rachenka, who was well aware where he was, brilliant tackle by Rob Jones. Bounce in Spartak's favour, it looked like it, but an offside flag brings the attack to an end. Good recovery by Rob Jones, uh, just as well Carpin perhaps didn't have the pace of one or two of the other forwards, uh, because I don't think there would have been certainly any way to have made uh, the recovery. I think he looked across for an early ball, such as we saw very early in the game from Lednyakov, but uh, no one was quite up with him, so he just hesitated and that enabled Jones to get back. Waters, free kick against Kleshtov. Well, that stage seemed to be doing up Walters' stop for him. Okay. Manaman. Red nap. Rob Jones, last played for the first team on September the 5th against Chelsea. Nine games in total. Free kick to Spartak. Alvina started to make a run and then came back. Ratchenko has gone forward. Very well time run, they've got a man over on the far side. Oh, that poor play by Radchenko. To go for the shot from such a tight angle when there were two colleagues in far better positions, particularly the one on the far side. Easier from up here, of course, but uh, that was very greedy and uh, not very clever. No, it was a good opportunity. I mean, more frightening was the space he found. Uh, again, uh, just wonder you know, what, what is happening with the marking as such. Uh, I mean, it's, they're 1-0 down Liverpool, but in all honesty, they, it could be 2-3, or three, definitely. Right. Marsh. McManaman is down that touchline, looking to attack. And Liverpool have been looking to attack. It's rather more than uh, I might have imagined. Even off. Fantastic weights down the middle. Radchenko in possession. Loses out to Marsh. The two in the crowd thought there should have been a free kick then. But his referee didn't agree. Hutchison is pushed well forward alongside Ian Rush. This is Rush, Hutchison now to Rush's left.
Red Knapp. Rush being watched by Anopka in the middle. And Walters trying to come across before Anopka cleared, but never looked like being successful. Four in attacking positions, other than McManaman. Corner one. I think that's the secret for Liverpool's point of view, to get it out wide to Walters and McManaman. They've both on occasions beaten their marker, and uh, the earlier they can get it, the better. Still five, including Mark Wright in the area. Marsh. And Wright looking for it, beaten by Lediakov. And here's Walters from Thomas. They've got men over here, Liverpool. And in the end, they were all around Rush. And the final shot is a disappointment. From Steve McManaman. A bit unlucky there. It wouldn't quite come down kindly, would it? Uh, just get it off the surface and, and the nod down. And just needed the touch to get it under control. And uh, the Spartak defence didn't allow it. Anopka. Left stop makes a good run, but it's covered by Waters. Garpin. Should be Burrows' ball. Didn't need to play it. Taking up a few seconds. Anopka. Don Hutchison. Particularly good pass for Waters. Best off. Really likes to get forward. Joined us late. We've had 27 minutes of the match. And Moscow Spartak lead by one to nothing. Goal scorer Pisarev. There's been one or two other alarms. Started with a, a wobbly moment from Bruce Grobola. Chasnik missed an absolute sitter been two or three breaks that might have ended in goals. Liverpool with just one chance fell to Steve McManaman. The tackle by Burrows. Determination took him through, even though he was fouled. But he was put in desperate trouble by the, the cross ball forward and, and that sort of almost set Bartek back on the attack. And that's the, the main concern, I'm sure, for Graham Stoon, that his side aren't keeping possession as well as they normally do and, and that one nearly slipped away from Mark right there. The referee didn't like that, for it, that uh, tackle either. It's Pisarev, didn't have all the free kick. Right forward again. Got to touch short. To get better free kicks in than that. Waters. It's Chasnik. The determination for Waters. The crowd thought it was a foul. McManaman. Couldn't hold it in.
Nitsky. Covered by Wright. Redknapp. Walters. Uh, Thomas, rather. McManaman. Into Walters. Something and boring going on. And the free kick given not for the challenge by Klestov, but by the one before. Walters on the ball, four Liverpool players on the far side, and Walters tries one, didn't come back enough for him. Definitely worth a chance from there, wasn't it? Uh, interesting, just looking at the strips, isn't it? I mean, it's almost like watching Liverpool play with Barthek, A, the way they play, and, and of course in their, their normal red strips. Hutchinson can try again. In the find of this season so far, Walters. German challenge on him. Plenty of time for Grubber that, but he doesn't uh, stand on ceremony on a sticky surface. Learned his lesson, or am I tempting fate by saying that? Yeah, I think that first experience put him off, no messing around now, one touch and away. McManaman, Marsh. Duffy. He's left. Four ball and uh, a little discussion going on between uh, Pisarev and Dmitry Ratchenka. Karpin, Lediakov. As Chasnik thought about making the run, wasn't a good ball. Soon as prowl up and down the uh, running track. Joined by Andrei Chernyshov. Played in all three of the uh, matches that the CIS played in Sweden in the European Championship. The dancer who uh, played alongside him played against England has since been transferred to uh, Dinamo of Moscow. Sarev, clearance, comes off Mike Marsh. Started nine in a row, Marsh. I don't think there was any question of uh, Rob Jones being hurried back had Steve Nickel been fit. As soon as happy with the performance of uh, Marsh at fullback, which he suggested last season, curiously enough, in the many games that he played in the many positions he suggested that fullback was probably his best play Jones caught this is Oratchenka and this is Lediakov they've given it away Oratchenka and Lediakov and Karpin shot blocked 
finally. Red now. Ten minutes to go to half time. Still just the one goal in the tenth minute for Spartak Moscow. But Liverpool's uh, problems have more often than not been caused by losing possession themselves. And on that occasion it was Rob Jones and then Son Hutchinson gave it away in the penalty box on a second occasion. Right clearance, which lands fortuitously at the feet of Redknapp. There have been moments when Mark Wright has uh, shown signs of rust. This is a good run by Walters. Thomas. Jones. McManaman with Marsh behind him. Everybody else to the left. encampment for Liverpool in uh, Russian territory. Redknapp. Karpin. Three up, three back. Still Karpin. Radchenka. The Chesnik far side. Ball deflected and Grobola able to recover his ground. Again they had a man over. Well, they passed and desired their way through uh, so impressively. If there's any consolation, any Liverpool supporters that are watching, though, CSK played very well in the first half against Barcelona and then tended to sit back on that lead. And uh, let's hope the same thing happens this evening. Just two hours ahead of you in Moscow. Good attempt on the turn by Walters, but the sting of the shot was taken off at the point of impact by the defender closest to him. sweeping across the Lenin Stadium the Olympic Stadium from 1980 four players up for Spartak strung across the field just too strong from Walters intended for Hutchison Walters again. Hutchison in the middle, but not there. They might have done better with that. They've got plenty forward, and they've got possession again. But not for long. Cut out by Lediakov. Vyshashnik to his left. This is he. Put by right, then given away by Red now. Certainly have created problems for themselves when they seem to have cleared the danger, they recreate it. There you go leaning into his man then I think there was a bit of pulling and the free kick is in Spartak's favour Ochenko is right of centre that's fairly uncommon in this part of the world doesn't receive the ball anyway. Well allowed to run by Lediakov. Dmitry Kestov in through the youth side. Karpin, who's an Estonian. Vietnitsky comes from Tashkent. too happy with the pass he was given uh, in the return then
Anofka. Sharpin. Tackled by Redknapp. It's a real jump in. Piatnitsky gave it a bit of pace. Back in numbers. That's nicely done by Rush. And Redknapp in possession. He's going down a cul de sac though. It's probably easier to run a distance out there on the pitch than it would be to walk down a street in just about anywhere in Moscow without finding a, a hole or a puddle in your way. Testov. Zednitsky. Lediakov and Grobolas committed from miles out and just got a bit of a defection. Three get back. Oh, really, I should have made more of that. Lediakov, an amazing escape for Liverpool. How does Bruce Grobelar get away with it? He just got a bit of a deflection, but really should have been made to pay. It was a great pass uh, from Lediakov. You almost forgot that uh, when you suddenly saw Bruce Grobelar out there. And in the end, when it came back out to Lediakov on the edge of the area, he, he shot actually found... Bruce Grobelar working his way back to goal almost on the penalty spot uh, and uh, he managed to get away with it as you say but they, they are living dangerously aren't they with that 1-0 moment of relief Barrows with the free kick Waters hold of the ball has to cross the line and when it did so it was the goal line Spartak currently holders of both the league title and the cup competition. The league from this season, the cup from last. And uh, suggesting that they're a more than useful side. They will certainly feel that they deserve more than the one goal scored in the 10th minute. Hutchison. Burrows. Orders to Jones. That's a defender's ball, a spoon pass like that. But the defender was committed too soon. The British referee has allowed very little in terms of a physical challenge. Comfortable turn. And here's Redknapp. over two minutes remaining in the half pretty friendly spirit it would seem and the free kick has been given spent quite a lot of time standing up and going up and down the 100 metres line Right. Burrows. Jones. Wasn't measured for too long. Lediakov. Little extreme. Michael Thomas. Fall down, no free kick. We're into the last minute of the first half. I think we'll go into the dressing room field where we're still very much in this one. And they could have been out of it in terms out of it in terms of both legs. Sharp in. Clearance by right. Rush to Walters. To Redknapp. To McManaman popping up on the left. And get inside his man, what he tried to. He just kept running straight, as far as the referee was concerned. Walters. 
Walters. Possessed by Piatnitsky. And that's the last action of the first half, which ends with the one goal scored in the 10th minute. And that gives Moscow Spartak a half-time lead. Well, it's no more than they deserve either. Uh, I mean, they played very, very well through the midfield. Had sort of three or four excellent chances. And it hasn't been a controlled performance by Liverpool. And I'm sure Graham soon has a lot of talking to be done at half-time, I should think, though. Well, there's a lot of relief in the studio that uh, it's not worse than 1-0, Alan. Well, they've got a jail, haven't they? They started badly. Um, they keep on giving the ball away, and that's the main problem. Every time Liverpool get the ball, the Russians look like they're going to score. After two minutes, they had a great chance. And from then on, it's been downhill. They look like they're a team of strangers. And as I say, they're trying to play it out of defensive situations where they should just kick it. Am I unfair to say that some of those senior players really should be helping some of the younger players? Well, that's right. Bruce's antics isn't helping. I mean, if you're playing in a game like that where you're under the cost, you're looking for experience and grovel to be solid and be very professional. He's come a couple of times and he's caused them problems and it's making everybody edgy. But as I say, they're still in it at 1-0, but they've got to tighten up a bit. With a manager with heart problems, I mean, that's, that's unthinkable, that kind of behaviour in goal. It's, it's, it's disturbing us here, looking you know, for a replay and a win. Mm, you, uh, you, you, know. you always hate to see sloppy passing, Jim, don't you? I do. Uh, you, you like to see top-class players deliver the ball well and make it easy to receive for the man who's receiving it. Mate, it's easy enough to say that. That's a difficult pitch. Difficult pitch for both It's a bad sides. pitch, but, yeah. I mean, look, the, the good chance after two minutes in the goal actually came when Liverpool were attacking. They gave the ball away, the Russians have broke, and they've caused them problems every time. Well, we'll look at some of those incidents uh, very soon. For the moment, though, let's have a look at uh, some of the other action from the Cup Winners' Cup. Slack defending and comic goalkeeping in Austria as Admira Vaca in the black were beaten 4-2 by Antwerp. Olaf Marshall put the home side one up in 24 minutes. But it was a night when the Belgium international Alexander Cienetinski was to score twice as the visitors helped themselves to four away goals. Cienetinski's first came ten minutes from half-time, courtesy of an extraordinary miss by the keeper Franz Gruber. There seems no reason why he completely failed to hold on to the ball. A first-time volley by Gerald Backer put Admira Vaca back in front at half-time, but the second half was to belong almost exclusively to the Belgians. This terrific pass released Didier Segers to score a second equaliser after 51 minutes. Nine minutes later, Chinatinsky's header back across the face of goal from the far post might already have crossed the line before Francis Severins applied the finish. Once again, though, the goalkeeping had left a lot to be desired. If the ball had crossed the line, then Chinatinsky would have scored a hat-trick because ten minutes later, he was on the spot to punish another defensive horror and make it a comfortable 4-2 win in the away leg for Antwerp. <laughs> Atletico Madrid, in their familiar stripe, scored two away goals against Trabzonspor of Turkey to make this tie already comfortable for the Spaniards. Futra got the first just before half-time and the tie was effectively settled by a second goal after 64 minutes. This time, Futre was the provider, Moye the scorer. Trabzonspor might have given themselves something to chase in the second leg, but for Donato's acrobatic goal-line clearance late in the second half. Nothing went right for last season's losing Cup Winners' Cup finalists, Monaco, at home to Olympiacos. That free kick was just one of several attempts that might have produced a Monaco goal, but didn't. And they were even denied what looked a blatant penalty. Monaco's trainer, Arsene Wenger, had to watch from the stands after being banned from the bench for arguing with a referee in a first-round match. He might well have had something to say about that. 
four minutes from time, Olympiakos, coached by the former Soviet star Oleg Blokin, broke away to score a dramatic winner. From Batista's cross, Jojoš Vaitsis beats two defenders to the ball for a very useful 1-0 win in the away leg. Swiss second division team Lucerne won at home 1-0 against Feyenoord. This free kick, 15 minutes from time, headed down and in by Martin Ruder. But Feyenoord had played the second half with only 10 men after defender John de Wolf had been sent off. And 1-0 may not prove enough for Lucerne in the second leg. Well, there's the list of the Cup Winners' Cup first leg ties there. Surprise home defeat, that one for Monaco against Olympiakos. But I think the most significant result on there so far is Werder Bremen, the holders of the Cup. They lost at home to Sparta Prague 3-2. Now then, that first goal, the goal, uh, I think that illustrated, Alan, probably more than anything else, just how flat Liverpool were at the back. Yeah, they had problems right from the start. It's Ian Rush gets the ball here, and this is a bad pass. But you have a bad pass in the middle of the park, it shouldn't lead to a goal. And Mark Wright makes a tackle, and really they're all over the place, the defence. Burroughs has got his hand up, takes it on, it's Hutchison, actually, it's running back after him. Bruce comes out, and it's in the back of the net. But as I said, they were struggling from the start with the flat back four. You've got makeshift defenders, though, really, haven't you? Marsh is not really a, a defensive-minded player. Good orthodox pass of the ball. But look how he doesn't join in after the breaks through. Look, he's let his man run inside him there. And not the, not the feeling, I've got to get goal side. I must do something to keep that ball out of the net. Amazing that Burroughs was putting his hand up there in a way, wasn't it? Because, I mean, he was playing them on by a good two, two yards. Yeah, he should have won't be happy with that either. They, they really shouldn't put their hand up. They should be chasing, not looking for offside. They were very fortunate not to be one down within, what, a minute, a minute and a half? That's the great hope. I mean, that is a patchwork defence, isn't it, by old standards of Liverpool's back four. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Leaving Nickel not being able to play made it look even this worse. This is what but, I was saying about the experienced yeah. players, because Mark Wright here is, is really playing everyone on side. Yeah, the, as I said, they're on, they've got the ball here, and this is the biggest problem. They kept on giving it away. This time it's Burroughs. Everybody's out of the game. Mark, look where Mark Wright is. He's about 10 yards behind everybody else. It comes across. And best chance that he's got his score from there, hasn't mm. he? And as we said, they've, they've been let out of jail. They could yes. have been three or four down. Yes. But they're only one down and they're still in the game. Yes. I mean, here, Bruce Grubbelar, you've mentioned Bruce, well, obviously, Alan, but uh, Jimmy? Well, uh, far be it for me to criticise Bruce and go, he provides a lot of excitement, but no one wants to see this kind of excitement. Look, utter coolness, absolute coolness, then the rush of blood, uh, as if he, you know, if. if Onto the his players, left foot. Yeah. But if the front he, players had showed the same aggression to get past their opponents as he showed there, <laughs> it might be more useful. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he comes out here, the ball gets played through. Again, the defence is all over the place, but they're, they're getting back. But Bruce comes out here, now, if, if he goes past them as he did, then you'd bet odds on that Spartak would score. And I think it's only a fantastic tackle by Burroughs in the end here. It's a good tackle by Wright, but the ball comes in again. I think Burroughs makes a great tackle. It's, it's all over the place. They survive. Well, they should, yeah, they get it out. Yeah. You could argue, of course, that Bruce Grubbler, here am I saying that the experienced players should help. I mean, he knows there. He, he clearly is worried about that defence. He is trying to act as a sweeper. He's trying to help them out. He's trying to act as a viewer. I mean, I've, obviously, I've played with Bruce for 10 years, and he could go maybe 30, 40 games where he wouldn't do that. And then all of a sudden, in one game, he'll have five or six. So he said two on a pitch like that you can't afford. Mm -hmm. You've got to kick it. You've got to clear your lines. Well, Are you going to be in trouble? Graham Souness is, uh, is known for you know, not mincing his words, Jim. So what will he be saying at this moment? I, I don't know what you keep saying to Bruce in a way to, that's any different. I mean, he did get a touch. He was only just right then. If he'd missed that ball completely, they wouldn't have been able to cover it. So, you know... He, he shouldn't have been there, Jim. He no, shouldn't have come out. No, agreed he shouldn't have been there. But in getting there, luck was with him and he got just a nick at that ball, which, which enabled Liverpool to survive. But what's, and Graham a... saying? but what's Graham saying to the rest of them? Not yeah. Bruce, what was he I, saying to the rest I, of them? I don't know what you can really say um, you know, to that makeshift back four that's going to make any difference except keep your heads, lad. We have been given you know, a gift from some... Is, oh, what a is it? We've been given a gift, a bounteous <laughs> gift from heaven in that we're only one down. You know? Do something about it. Let's, let's, let's take the gift. You'll you know? basically be saying, don't give it away so much. Yeah. That's, that's the mistakes they've made in the first half. As soon as they've got it, they've given it away, time after time.
Jamie Redknapp has to be careful not to get himself sent off now, yeah, doesn't he? I, I thought this was the worst moment of the game because a yellow card, cards are meant when there's malice. This was a legitimate attempt to get the ball. Look, he's gone for the ball, it's been squeezed through his legs and here's the referee giving a yellow card to a young kid who tried to get the ball. There I, has to be intent for cards to be given. And I thought he shouldn't have dived in there. I thought it was an inexperienced challenge in the middle of the park. But it wasn't malicious, is what I'm saying. There's, no, but he's caused his foul? own downfall. If, if everything like that is a yellow card, what, is, what are the fouls for in the game? What represents a foul? When you go for the ball, which he did, and you miss it, that's a foul. Mm. But it wasn't an intention to kick the man. Eh? In no I agree way. with what you're saying, but yeah. at the same time, he shouldn't have dived in. He's inexperienced yeah. showed in, in the challenge. It's looking a little ominous uh, for Liverpool at this moment. Let's just have a look at the overall picture for British sides. And... Uh, Let's just concentrate for the moment on the fact. I think Celtic could probably come back there against the Borussia Dortmund. And uh, Kaiserslautern in that game, Sheffield Wednesday will be glad that they've got the away goal to give them a chance. Let's just pick up on the significant action from Tynecastle last night. Hearts nil, standard Liège 1. Vervoort takes it. Oh, it's a close range header, and Liège have scored. Betanio, the number six, who's scored a lot of goals from that wide position on the right side of midfield, stole in ahead of the defenders, and he's given Stanley Liège the lead. Maybe there's a reply here from Robertson, and he's put it over. Robertson back heeled it. Oh, a great strike by Gary Mackay. And off the line, finally. Oh, dear. On the end of that little back heel, hit a terrific shot. It was a fine save, too, from Bodard. And then when Robertson knocked it back in, it was finally scrambled away and cleared by Vivort. Free kick. Cruz! Oh, maybe he should have scored. He'd stolen it in the back. Only Hogg was aware of the danger, and the downward header was just wide of the post. Now, Hogg's been the danger man in situations like this. Looking for him again, the keeper's punched. Mackay, oh, it dipped, it took a deflection, and for a moment it looked as though it had dipped in. Again, they look for Hogg, again he gets a touch, Robertson! Oh, nobody could get on the end of it. Snowden, and cleared away from the six-yard box, and Hart just can't quite get that equaliser. Hart with this free kick, teed up by Robertson, hit by Snowden! Goosens. First time cross. Picked up by Genoa. Van Roy. Still Van Roy. Still Van Roy. Tees it up finally for Vilmots. Well, Hearts need quite a performance in Belgium. But let's, uh, what were your impressions about Rangers 2, Leeds United 1, Alan? Am I all right to speak, Jim? Wasn't it you interrupting me? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, we're friends, really. Go on, off you go. I didn't see the game. <laughs> Did you? I thought it was a good game. It was a great game to watch. I think two good sides, but whether either team would win the European Cup, I don't know. I think the game was too open last night for my liking. Both sides always look like they're going to lose goals. And the more you play in the European Cup, or the more I play in the European Cup, I realise that if it's an open game, the Continentals will do you. Mm. It was strange, wasn't it, that uh, Leeds started so well, but Rangers came back so well? Yeah, Rangers did well to come back in the game. But I thought you did that very nicely. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, we're friends here. There we are, Liverpool back out on the side in the Lennon Stadium there. And we now rejoin Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. And the conditions are such that they've had to remark the lines during the half-time interval. And if you've joined us late, let me uh, tell you immediately that uh, Spartak of the team this evening playing in red. Magnificent uh, Lenin Stadium, just round the corner from where you can uh, go and look at the graves of people like uh, Chekhov and Khrushchev from rather different walks of life, and indeed of Shostakovich. Um, perhaps not the best of uh, joins of two thoughts, but uh, Liverpool must know that they could have been buried during the first 45 minutes. But they're only one goal down, they're playing in green. And they attack the goal to our right. Although I don't know whether you would agree with me, Trevor. I hope they won't attack quite as much as they did in the first half. 
Well, it's, there's always that temptation when you lose an early goal that, uh, well, would 1-0 be, be sufficient that the away goal uh, could be vital later on? But it, it's a case of getting the balance, isn't it? And uh, definitely in, in the midfield, there isn't that obvious anchor man. So there's always a temptation for the three midfield players, Thomas Hutchinson and Redknapp, to, to go forward together at times, although Jamie Redknapp is the one who, who's got the role of holding the season. But they, they do need to be tighter and particularly stifle the midfield, where, where I was very impressed with uh, Pianitsky and, and also Letiakov. Clearance by right. Of course, until recently, was thought to be the key man in the England defence before the European Championships, that was the case. Burrows, it should be said, has been on the fringe of the England side, though more as a wide player. And Rob Jones, although playing on the wrong flank, is considered to be one of the great wide hopes. So there is uh, some ability in, in the Liverpool defence. And Mike Marsh has had a solid time playing at right back up to this particular contest. First free kick to Liverpool in the second half. Stadium where uh, well, they've had two matches in 48 hours. Good attempt to cross by Michael Thomas. comment from uh, Graham Souness as Walters tries to build a Liverpool attack said that the inexperience in midfield showed early on but he considers that Spartak Moscow are there for the taking uh, one presumes he means over the two legs Trevor well I think at times uh, I mean there's definitely a part inside technical team and, and when they lose possession occasionally themselves have a tend just to jog back and there is a bit of space to, to break uh, from Liverpool's point of view but I think they've been so tired out getting numbers back themselves in the first half they haven't capitalised on that opportunity but as I said last night Barcelona came into the second half very much against CSK after being under the hammer a bit the first half so perhaps Liverpool can do the same free kick for the challenge by Hutchison on Lidiakov a very disappointing shot from uh, Spartak's point of view came from Beschasnik it's the one change in the side from last Saturday when Spartak won the first Russian championship Asayev among the substitutes I suspect he's the player who's been replaced I suspect we'll be seeing him before the uh, night is over Pisarev score of the one goal which divides the team so far back in the tenth minute Anopka a little kindly for him this is Lediakov test for Jones back from Karpin plenty forward as Chasnik is in the middle Gednitsky and straight into the midriff of Bruce Grobola there's far too much space in the penalty area again for the, the forward who turned and, and set up the shot. I think it was Don Hutchinson who was just marking uh, and, and you must get tighter and, and sometimes when the, the midfield players do get back into that area they just give them two or three yards and you can't afford to do that with the skills they've got. Manaman held off by Ivanov. 23 years Liverpool have played in Europe. This is only the second time they played aside from the old Soviet Union. The previous team was the Georgian side, Dinamo Tbilisi, in 1979-80. Tbilisi won 4-2 on aggregate. Nopka. Karpin. Jasnik. Chenka is over this way. Pisarev. Forced to cross a bit by the presence of Steve McManaman, who continues his cross field run. That's five minutes of the second half. Spartak Moscow 1, Liverpool 0.
Thomas. Didn't make the most of that and got away with uh, a bit of a body check. McManaman, who's got clear. Rush, far post. Thomas at the back of the area is unmarked. This is Thomas from further back. The shot was disappointing from Hutchison. As you said, Hutchison John Hutchison has scored in the last four games and uh, perhaps that's his uh, best opportunity to date. And on that occasion, Steve McManaman, I still feel Warders and McManaman definitely are the, the best chance of, of breaking down this Spartak defence because out wide they have got past their men. And on that occasion, he pulled it back to the edge of the penalty area well and uh, Hutchison just couldn't quite keep down his shot. is unrelenting. The four major entertainment in the city of Moscow. Theatre and ballet still going to do good business. This is the game of the people. The threat that Rob Jones ends. people's team based on trade unionists originally she started back in 1922 but reformed in 1935 and the president is a former player and coach of the team Schenker was over this way cut out by McManaman Walters Hutchison looks up to see what's on. McManaman. Pisarev. And with his number half obscured is Radchenka. Pitch getting heavier and heavier. This is Lediakov. Jones. Big challenge, not conceding the corner, turning it his way and on his... Uh, Slightly more favoured side. Chunishov started it. Ivanov tries to carry it forward. Lediakov quickly dispossessed. Plenty forward. Uh, a substitution to be made by Spartak Moscow and it was the one I was suggesting although slightly earlier than uh, one or two might have imagined the 18 year old is going to be replaced Vladimir Deschasnik is about to give way to Mikhail Rusayev and it looks like uh, Ronnie Rosenthal is also going to get into the action He's replaced Ian Rush. I can only think there's a little pull there. Well, that's not a good sign, is it, for, for Liverpool looking for Ian Rush to hold the ball up and, and perhaps get that vital away goal. And, and uh, as you say, it must be some sort of injury, the heavy conditions, a slight strain or pull of some sort. He's had one or two injury problems, hasn't he, over the last few months? Uh, and uh, it'd be a worrying if he's going to be out for that long, but uh, Ronnie Rosenthal comes on. He's got a job to do himself. And the news is that it's a groin strain for Ian Rush. So the Israeli international on in his stead. Mark Walters. First touch for Rosenthal, and it's a good one too. Eighth appearance of the season. Started just twice. Now six times as a substitute. Hutchison. And again. Rosenthal. 
Redknapp. Always looking to be the defender's ball. Alexchenko. Good interception by Michael Thomas. Needed to be too. Walters. To go back a bit to find Jones. Sprightly start here by Ronnie Rosenthal. And he gets the free kick for that. Slid a long way, but there's no doubt that he was tripped. He's been pretty lively uh, when I've seen him this season. I mean, on Sunday against Manchester United, he, he played well, and the pace uh, already started to cause uh, one or two problems. A lot of whistles in the stadium, though I gather you're having trouble hearing the uh, crowd noise. Liverpool with the opportunity. Good header out by Chernyshov. And here's Karpin. Jadnitsky. Good return ball. Plenty forward for Moscow Spartak. And they've got slightly outmaneuvered. This is Pisarev. Trying to set up the man coming in from behind who was Lediakov. But the shot goes wide. And soon that's again out of his seat. But on that occasion it was a another good counter-attack after Liverpool perhaps enjoyed their, their sort of best spell of, of pressure themselves. But again, it just shows how dangerous Spartak can be. And uh, But they're looking a bit leggy and, and a bit heavy, not getting men forward in little clusters as they were in that first 45 minutes. And I think uh, conditions are taking their toll. Playing for 12 minutes in the second half. No addition to Spartak's goal. Goal scored in the 10th minute of the first half by Pisarev. Rejoined us in atmosphere. Block by Mike Marsh, but uh, the referee plays on. And again plays on. And Marsh gets the ball away. Rosenthal is dragged some uh, several metres by Nopka. Lediakov brings Kleshtov into the play. Lediakov again. Only done by Jones, but he's only given it to Ivanov. And he's probably grateful that Ivanov failed to control the ball. Gone forward now. Six foot three. Could have played the ball in the air to him. On the feet. Neatly done. And blocked by the shins of Grobelar in the end. But his challenge coming out was a good one. Great little e interchange, even off the first back heel, Vichenko, the nod, and then a knockback from even off and slid in. Chris Grobler did well, didn't need to hold on to that. Liverpool on the counter, and the free kick is given for the body check by Andrei Chernyshov. Regular choice in defence, Chernyshov, and for Moscow Spartak. Coach Oleg Romantev. But in the new Russian side, he's made just one appearance, and that's the substitute. The Russian national side, that is. Redknapp and Walters, the usual two on the free kicks. A real old push and shove. Hutchison, the Liverpool player involved. Four against four on the near side of the penalty spot as we look. Well struck. Excellent strike by Jamie Redknapp. Suchesov electing to punch the ball away. It'd be pretty greasy. And that would be the way most continental goalkeepers would have dealt with that. Rusayev. Thomas back. Redknapp. Too well forward then. Benjamin's now come back a little bit. And one against one. Plenty of time. Try just off to clear with his feet. The 
this side of his offside. Played an hour. Bruce Krobola has been beaten once, or at least when he won, ball has gone past him into the goal. It's quite the same thing. bit too short. Even off. Masayev and Grobola rightly committed and not in trouble. Marsh. Thomas. Walters gets the cross in a bit earlier and the diving effort was by uh, Michael Thomas. This is half definitely more even though, isn't it? I mean, uh, I would have thought uh, Liverpool supporters anchor out soon at uh, watching the play a little bit more relaxed, not completely relaxed, but uh, the defensive gaps that were there in the first 45 minutes are not quite as apparent and uh, they are closing down and hustling the Spartak midfield that bit better so as they're not quite having uh, the freedom that they had in that opening spell. In terms of players available to them, Torben Picknick, the newly signed aim, was ineligible. Paul Stewart is suspended. Mulby and Nickel on the injured list. Played by McManaman. Rosenthal pulls away. Marsh. He said it for Rosenthal. Anopka. Lediakov, and got themselves in a bit of a mix up there. Marsh. Gutnitsky. Seeing quite so much of him as we did in the first half. Square of the ball carrier, Pisarev would push well forward. This is a substitute for Saev. Didn't look at all, but they took a long time to get the ball away. Error from Burrows. We've played now exactly 19 minutes of the second half. Still the one goal. Scored by Pisarev for Moscow Spartak in the 10th minute. Free kick is given. Liverpool, if you are joining us late, and I'm sure there must be many people on their way home at what, 20 past 6 your time? 20 past uh, 8 in Moscow. A lot of people coming in. Liverpool are playing in the green. strange seeing, seeing them play against the side who would seem to have borrowed their kit the red in uh, Spartak Moscow free header Chernyshov Saev free kick is given uh, the cannon somewhat deeper Zanitsky invites the taker to uh, use the ball rather better Return to comfortable. It's like Monopoly for a moment. Duopoly. Still advancing 
Lester shakes his head. He's wanting rather better, in spite of uh, his team's record of doing well away from home. Shooting against Real Madrid in the uh, quarterfinals of the European Cup after winning the championship in 89. Walter is showing good pace, but he had company all the way. It's the corner. Rosenthal with a not good, he's back. Right is up, just short of the six yard area. And got half a bit to it, and it's in. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, this is just what Liverpool uh, did want, and Mark Wright in particular, I think. Mark Walters whipped it in, goes with the defender, could almost, I think, have come off uh, the defender's shoulder, but Mark Wright it was there, and I'm sure not many people would uh, get it taken away from him after the problems that he's had this season. Challenge at the near post. Looks if it goes off the back, for me, of the Spartak defender. But that vital away goal, because I think Spartak do look at side who, on the counter-attack, could score away goals. So I think that was a, a vital score tonight. Certain poetic justice, because the defender was clearly uh, pushing Mark Wright all the way. Two corners each. And on the second one there, Liverpool equalising the score. 1-1. 22 minutes played in the second half. And Graham Sooners' comment that they were there for the taking. He's now entitled to say, I told you so. Well, they definitely have sat back a bit on this second half. I mean, you know, credit to Liverpool as well. They've come more into the game. But it's very similar to the match uh, CSK against Barcelona, where almost they, you had the feeling that... The, the Russian team think 1-0 is a good result and that's sufficient, let's hold on to it and you allow the initiative then to the opposition and, and they pay the penalty and for the record the uh, scoreboard in the Lenin Olympic Stadium has credited the equaliser to Mark Wright oh dear, dear the early shot and it's in he didn't learn. 2-1. And from despair, there is sudden delight. Mistake by Bruce Gobbler and Carpin made him pay in full measure. Didn't learn from the first half. Changed his mind where he was going to play the ball. Pushed it away from the oncoming Rasaev. But there, Carpin was waiting. And first time, and Bruce Grobelar couldn't recover his ground this time. Well, what can you say? I mean, as you say, it went to play it to the, to the right-hand side. I think it was to rock, uh, Mike Marsh. It got blocked down, so he changed his mind, lost his footing, tried to then play it to Rob Jones, and it's gone wide. And, and to his credit, uh, kept his head very well. Carpin just slid it up along the slippery surface, and there was no way back to Bruce Grobelar. 24 minutes of the second half gone. We're in the 25th, as you can see. Spartak have regained the lead. Liverpool not able to enjoy the scoring of an away goal for too long. Given away. Barrows. Still looks so concerned, the 38-year-old coach of the Moscow side. Played in this stadium in the Olympic Games of 1980, Oleg Romantsev, and won a bronze medal. Referee making further notes.
Waters. Anopka. Booking a piece now. Briefly, it was one goal apiece, but not for very long. Ivanov got a good touch for a big follow as we saw in the area earlier in this half right to Marsh still have confidence in Bruce Grubbler sometimes players get themselves in that sort of position and then they remember they're not supposed to play it back without putting the goalkeeper under pressure that was well seen good cut out by Kleshtoff Lediakov Vietnitsky very disappointed that one didn't come through that was the challenge that brought the booking for Dmitry Kleshtoff Calmly done by Redknapp. McManaman. Two youngest players in the side, but not entirely together. McManaman with a bit more uh, of a chore to do. Saev. Goal has definitely lifted the Russian team. Right. Oh, it's not what he wants to be doing at this stage of the game, surely. Is Lediakov. And still, good block tackle from Burrows. But really, you think a player of the experience of Mark Wright wouldn't be doing things like that. We've gone very much back to the first half play now, isn't it? Just, I mean, Liverpool got the equaliser, and then you thought, well, I wonder what the character of this Spartak side is like. And, and before you could find out, they got back to 2-1, and, and suddenly they've got another yard of pace and, and pushing forward, looking for a third now. Pisarev nearly cleared by Burrows. Bit of a gift for McManaman. Almost put Rosenthal away. Five involved in this Liverpool attack. Jones offering himself on the left would make a six. Walters with a shooting chance. Good strike off the post. Really well struck shot by Mark Walters and he's very unlucky. Lediakov dispossessed. You really would think this was uh, a one-off match rather than a two-leg European tie. Magnificent piece of play. I mean, came inside his man and on his right foot, very near the edge of the area. And from the minute it hit his foot, I thought it was a goal. Goalkeeper would have stood no chance to get a hand to it and comes back off the post. And, and Warders and McManaman, for me, if it can just stay 2-1, I think they've got the ability to get past the defenders, their markers, uh, and could turn the game at hand to it. We'll be there, of course, in a fortnight's time. Promises to be a good contest. Red Knapp with the free kick. Still can't get it away. Acrobatic stuff at the finish. Oh, and a clear kick. I don't know whether the linesman saw that, but it was absolutely blatant. Right then takes a little bit of his uh, own back. And there's still swapping punches, Lediakov and Wright, and the referee has finally spotted it and spotted an injured player down. But Lediakov just swung his foot and kick Mark Wright as blatantly as anything. And how the linesman on this side didn't see it, I don't know. Yeah, Tuna's also worried. It looks a bit uh, Rob Jones, who, or Don Hutchinson upfield there. Probably Don Hutchinson, uh, who's got a knock. And with the injuries that he has got, he, 
He can't afford any more with Ian Rush already having limped on. They had to include Steve Nichol among the substitutes. The others, Steve Parkness, Nicky Tanner, and the reserve goalkeeper, David James. And Jones finally up on his feet. Goes back very gingerly. Kept in. But it's a Spartak throw. Chenka takes it. Even off. by McManaman, nicely out by Redknapp to Thomas Rosenthal now it's given away again in midfield Rusayev is forward, Lediakov in possession Lediakov a little too casual and Anopka Two covering the one player up, Rosenthal. It looks as if uh, just bide in time at the moment, Liverpool, until they can get uh, Rob Jones off. So, I mean, he's been out such a long time. Yes, there's the, the card uh, with that chin problem. Just hope it's something different. And the fact he's come back after a long layoff and, and with the testing conditions, it might just be a knock of a precautionary. But you hope it's not a, a sort of long term reoccurrence. I understand that the groin is uh, the problem, and he's going to be replaced by Nicky Tanner. He's had a very difficult time, Rob Jones, since he really came to the attention of the England manager. Thought he was going to be part of the squad for the European Championship and suffer from the shin splints. Nicky Tanner played a lot of matches last season, usually in the centre of the defence. The substitution... Graham Sooners could well have done without. The two that he's had to make have both been because of injuries. The first one to rush. No, you're quite right about central defender because that's where he's gone alongside Mark Wright and David Burrows is the one who's pushed across to become the left bank. Here's McManaman. Stole away from his man. And goal! Amazing! They've come back for the second time and McManaman got about a yard on his marker then the marking as far as Spartak are concerned was absolutely disastrous and <laughs> Ronnie Moran and Graham Sunis congratulating each other but it really was a very bright piece of play by the 20 year old Steve McManaman he got clearly away from Ivanov and struck it with his left foot and beat the goalkeeper on his near post 2-2 it was a wonderful turn, and when, when he's hit that shot, I thought to myself, oh no, because I, I was expecting him to swear it across the face of the goal, and you would, to a certain extent, have to blame the goalkeeper for anticipating the cross, probably like all of us, and allowing it to go in the near post. But good skill by Man Manaman to set up the opening, and in the end, 2-2, uh, and it looks a pretty good scoreline, doesn't it? And it was interesting, Trevor, that while we were looking at the replay, Nicky Tanner ran to Bruce Grobelaar, and shook him by the hand. It was Bruce Grobola whose error had allowed Spartak to lead for the second time. Now Liverpool have two away goals. And they mustn't give anything else away, but they might. Licked away by Marsh and put out of harm's way. Great bit of discussion going on as... Uh, Barrow has finally got rid of the ball. It looks as though he's about to burst into tears for a I think that sort of game, really. But for the neutral, it's been hugely enjoyable on an extremely difficult surface. And uh, one has to say that it's been enjoyable because it's been absolutely littered with error. That was nearly another error there, wasn't it? Just having got all square again, uh, they're at the most vulnerable, Liverpool. 
little under 10 minutes remaining. Bruce Grobelar comes and makes his best catch of the evening. Here's Marsh. Still they are forward in numbers. Marsh again, low cross, Rosenthal trying to set up uh, Thomas, play by Anopka. Bietnitsky. Lediakov. Slowed in the second half. Anopka's got forward. Gets the corner, Marsh beats him. but every bit is wet not to be away but it's going to come straight back even off failed to do a simple job that's the order of the evening for Mark Walters as cold as it will be here fairly soon Bob. Zero. And some shirt pulling by Hutchison. And Spartak have the free kick. And Bruce Grobola asking for four in the wall. Vachenka tries to curl it and Grobola makes a good save. Just wonder whether the referee would have allowed that because still sorting out the wall as you can see just thought he saw an opening Bruce Grobelar though alert quite right the referee then right if you wanted to take it early just play on some over referees who do that right needed to make the challenge and hasn't let it go that'll be a penalty brought down by Grobelar don't think the referee had any choice oh and he's showing Bruce Grobelar the red card well is he or is he not trying to reach the ball then his arm came through and in fact it was uh, Rachenka who was caught not Ledikov and Bruce Grobola is sent off and Liverpool have used their two substitutes so they have to play for seven minutes with an outfield player going into goal they can't bend the rules that one or two sides have done this season by bringing off a player and bringing on a goalkeeper they've already used the two allowed substitutes Grobola sent off second away match in Europe this season in which Liverpool have had a player sent off Paul Stewart was involved in Limassol but that really did seem to me to be terribly harsh but it's the letter of the law these days well I, I hadn't even crossed my mind I suddenly thought myself that just sums up poor old Bruce Grobola's day Mark, Mark Wright just got done didn't he uh, by Rachenko and as I say uh, when he came out it was, uh, I suppose, all that Bruce Grobelar could do to try and get the ball, and I thought he went for the ball. Uh, but it was definitely a penalty, no question. And as Grobelar walks off, Carpin, who beat Grobelar once, now tries to beat David Burrows. Match absolutely packed with incident, but very strange. Tick round to a little over five minutes left. Carpin will eventually take and score. Spite of a valiant effort by the substitute goalkeeper. For the third time, Spartak Moscow lead Liverpool. Might have thought about going with his foot, David Burrows. He might have just got a, a toe into it. In the end, it was his right hand he tried to get. But uh, what a topsy-turvy match this has been, isn't it? I mean, just as you think uh, Liverpool got back 
to 2-2. Two, two. That's going to be a good result and, and looking as if they're in control again. They concede a, a third goal. And to be fair, that has been, you know, this season now, hasn't it, conceding too many goals? Yes, and too many late in the day. Ipswich leads and indeed on Sunday too in the last 11 minutes. But it seems very harsh that the laws now say that a goalkeeper who makes a challenge like that is to be sent off. That's for the rule makers here in the Lenin Stadium. Moscow Spartak lead 3-2 and look for a fall. They haven't got it away yet. Spartak really overcooking it when simplicity was called for. And the thing is, uh, why are they trying to walk the ball in when they've got David Burrows in goal? I don't know. You, you'd think it would be a shoot on site policy. It's a moot point how many shimmies David Burrows did when that penalty was taken. Certainly the, foot, the feet were moving all over the place. Not too many referees ask for penalties to be retaken these days. If they, if they fail, Carpin didn't. Rosenthal just run into his man. Three and a half left, plus a bit of stoppage time. And the referee says play on. <laughs> the crowd were feeling they saw David Burroughs pick it up, but uh, Mike Marsh definitely headed it back. And uh, as long as David Burroughs does know the rules, well, on that occasion he was quite right to pick it up with his hand. It's very tough for him with the, uh, with the new laws, but he knew what he was doing. But the referee for a second wasn't sure. Not away yet. Hutchison. I'm too concerned it seems to get his man. He's in the left back position, of course, now. Uh, it's being located by David Burroughs, who's moved back into goal. I mean, it's not easy to keep up with all the movement. I don't know how many people in this city read uh, Lewis Carroll, but it's certainly been an issue of Wonderland stuff, hasn't it? All topsy-turvy. The moment it started, really, even before a ball was kicked to see the opposition playing in Liverpool colours. And it's been a very funny evening, but it's been an entertaining one. And the Russians lead 3-2 and look for a fourth. Burrow stays firmly on his line. And Pisarev tries to get to the ball. Oh, and an opportunity that goes away. Snapped at the chance. It was Radchenko again. He was pulled down for the penalty. Well, that was a golden opportunity, wasn't it? 4 2 would look a, a lot worse than 3 2. And Graham Sunes knows that. And uh, that was an escape, an important one, I think. Coming up to the end of the 44th minute, indeed, according to the uh, stadium clock, we moved into the last minute. Pisarev, Rusayev, Pisarev, good turn by Wright, and the free kick given for the challenge on him. Surely that was an occasion when the ball should have been booted to the other end of the pitch. They have done some strange things, Liverpool. Rusayev. Karpin. Took too long. Mark Walters came back to dispossess him, but he hasn't put the ball out of play. There are still four waiting for the cross. Rusayev with half a header, and it's in on the far side as the ball wasn't cleared again. And it's 4 2 to Spartak of Moscow. And I think it's Rachenko again. Rusayev, no, he was the player wide who scored. And frankly, through the mud, I can't yet tell you who it was. But it all started, of course, from that free kick, didn't it? When, you know, Liverpool had the free kick, could have taken their time. You said whack it the other end of the field. But, I mean, they didn't have to take it as quickly as that. They lost possession. 
Lawrence. Then they set up the attack on the left. It went across, came back in, and then it broke kindly, and it's 4-2. Now, that is going to take some retreat. Goal. Trevor has been given to Lediakov. Who was the player wide on the edge of the six-yard area. 4-2. But I don't think this tie is by any means over. I think it's going to be very exciting at Anfield in two weeks' time. There will be more goals, surely. Marsh, might be more goals here. Redknapp. We're playing the time the referee is allowing for stoppages. And here's Rosenthal. Got a player far side, but he couldn't get the ball across. But he's got a corner. Mark right forward again. Has scored one. Oh, it took too long to get it away. And not just some of the defending has been curious in the extreme. This is Rusayev. They've got plenty forward and Liverpool have still got three in the opposition half. This is absolute madness. What can they be thinking? Well, I think it's just been that sort of 90 minutes. I mean, Graham's as we saw out of the picture just now of showing his frustration and I'm sure he his thoughts will go back to that penalty decision when they lost the goalkeeper because even 3-2 at that stage I don't think they'd have lost the fourth goal but seeing him go off David Burrows going back in goal and you just had that feeling that a fourth goal was going to come from Spartak and it's going to be very difficult at Anfield but as you say uh, that's going to be some match in a couple of weeks time isn't it well they've Scored twice away from home, so 2-0 would make it 4-all, and Liverpool would go through on the away goals rule. That's for tomorrow. The night isn't over yet. And the referee still has more time to allow. Has a check of the watch. Because Spartak want the ball as far up to the left as they can get it. Liverpool in possession. Mars, take your time. Redknapp down that touchline. Could have been a hole behind him if he'd have lost the ball. Throw from further back. Still we play on. Four two is the score at the end of the first leg. A score against Liverpool. And the scorers on the night, Pisarev, Wright, Tarpin, McManaman. Tarpin again from the penalty spot with uh, Bruce Grobola sent off for bringing down Ratchenka, making it 3-2, and Lediakov making it 4. And uh, there's been a little bit of trouble down on the touchline, and we understand that Graham Stunis may be reported to the UEFA official for something said in a loud voice. But the final score here in the Lenin Stadium after a curious, fascinating, but very interesting contest, to say the least, is Moscow Spartak 4, Liverpool 2. We could be talking all evening with the incident from that second half, but for those of you who've been coming in throughout the game, let's now go back and see all the key moments of that extraordinary game in Moscow. Redknapp, not the youngest player on the field, although the only teenager in the Liverpool side. And this is Lediakov. Crosses early and they've got themselves outmaneuvered. And the opportunity is not taken. Really far too casual. Vladimir Vestetnik just thought that all he had to do was to side put the ball in. And he just didn't concentrate on the task at hand. They've got to get back quickly. Break is by Pisarev. Who scores? They got really caught out then, Liverpool. All pushing forward under the halfway line. And really, simple, straightforward pass. Nikolai Pisarev. Nikolai Pisarev. Nikolai Pisarev. Nikolai Pisarev. Nikolai Pisarev. Nikolai Pisarev. 
then came back. Rodchenko has gone forward. Very well timed run. They've got a man over on the far side. Oh, that poor play by Rodchenko. To go for the shot from such a tight angle when there were two colleagues in far better positions, particularly the one on the far side. This stop. Dednitsky. Lediakov and Grobolas committed from miles out and just got a bit of a deflection. Three get back. Oh, really, I should have made more of that. Lediakov, an amazing escape for Liverpool. How does Bruce Grobolas get away with it? He just got a bit of a deflection, but really should have been made to pay. Pisarev, score of the one goal which divides the team so far. Back in the tenth minute. Anopka. Oh, listen kindly for him. This is Lediakov. Test for Jones. Back from Karpin. Plenty forward. As Chasnik is in the middle. Gernitsky. And straight into the midriff of Bruce Grobola. Thomas makes the most of that and got away with uh, a bit of a body check. McManaman, who's got clear. Rush, far post. Thomas at the back of the area is unmarked. This is Thomas from further back. The shot was disappointing from Hutchison. As you said, Hutchison done Hutchison scored in the last four games and uh, perhaps that's his uh, best opportunity to date. There you go. Brings fleshed off into the play. Lediakov again. Only done by Jones, but he's only given it to Ivanov. He's probably grateful that Ivanov failed to control the ball. Gone forward now. Six foot three. Could have played the ball in the air to him. On the feet. Neatly done. And blocked by the shins of Grobelar in the end. But his challenge coming out was a good one. Rosenthal with a knock at his back. Right is up, just short of the six-yard area. And got half a bit to it, and it's in. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, this is just what Liverpool did want, and Mark Wright in particular, I think. Mark Walters whipped it in, goes with the defender, could almost, I think, have come off uh, the defender's shoulder, but Mark Wright it was there, and I'm sure not many people would uh, get it taken away from him after the problems that he's had this season. And for the record, the uh, scoreboard in the Lenin Olympic Stadium has credited the equaliser to Mark Wright. Oh, dear, dear. The early shot, and it's in. He didn't learn. 2-1. Here's McManaman. Stole away from his man. And scored! Amazing. They've come back for the second time. And McManaman got about a yard on his marker then. Wright needed to make the challenge and hasn't. Let it go. That'll be a penalty. Brought down by Grobola. Don't think the referee had any choice. Oh, and he's showing Bruce Grobola the red card. Well, is he or is he not trying to reach the ball then? His arm came through. Grobola walks off. Carpin, who beat Grobola once, now tries to beat David Burrows. And he take and score. Carpin. Took too long, Mark Walters came back to dispossess him, but he hasn't put the ball out of play. There are still four waiting for the cross. Rusayev 